6 o'clock news starts right now. A somber day of remembrance for the San Antonio Police Department. SAPD held a tribute to its fallen officers today as we head into the Memorial Day weekend. Garrett Berger brings us inside that ceremony and talks with the family of the officer who most recently died in the line of duty. The families of the fallen filed in slowly to the mournful drone of bagpipes to sit in blue and black banded chairs. Each of the officers that we are here today to honor answered a higher call for service to their community. Since 1857, 62 San Antonio police officers have died in the line of duty. Their names engraved in black granite and in their families' hearts. Motor officer Frederick Koblitz. Killed in crashes from COVID or gunshots. The department paid special homage to the most recent of its fallen. Officer David Evans has been added to the wall of honor. Evans was shot multiple times in 2003, but returned to duty. 19 years later, in February 2022, he succumbed to complications from his old injuries. Today, his widow clipped his name to the department's memorial flag, the 62nd ribbon to adorn it. This is not how I would have wanted our story to end. Though it was a moment of sorrow, it was also one of pride. I'm proud of what he did. I'm proud of the man he was with the uniform and outside the uniform. And she joined a line of loved ones for whom that mixture of emotions is all too familiar as they lay yellow roses next to their officers' names. He used to always bring me flowers and now it's my turn to give him flowers. Though the names sprawl across this monument, there's still yards of stone face left, blank, left open for names that the department hopes it will never have to etch. I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Tonight, we're still working to learn the name of the 75-year-old woman hit and killed by a car while crossing a South Side Street. This happened around 915 last night in the 1600 block of Pleasanton Road near Bircham Avenue. Officers say the woman and a teenager were crossing that street when the woman was hit. The driver told police they did not see the pair crossing. SAPD says the driver did stop to help and will not be facing any charges. That teenager wasn't hurt. Tonight, the Bear County Sheriff's Office is investigating after a wrong way driver hit a deputy and his canine. This happened around noon on Pierce on Old Pearsall Road. Sheriff Javier Salazar says the deputy tried to lay down spike strips to stop suspects in a black sedan. The driver of the sedan tried to swerve to avoid those strips, but instead wound up crashing into the BCSO unit and knocked the deputy over. Salazar says the deputy didn't suffer major injuries. As for the canine, it was inside the unit but was not injured. BCSO arrested the suspects shortly after. Tomorrow, the Texas House will vote on whether to impeach Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. The corrupt politicians in the Texas House are demonstrating that blind loyalty to Speaker Dade Phelan is more important than upholding their oath of office. That was Paxton late this afternoon, less than 24 hours from that vote, calling out House Speaker Dade Phelan and going on to blame the Biden administration. The timing of the House vote is critical because the Texas legislature wraps up in just days. Here's what happens next. As you will see, there are 20 proposed articles of impeachment alleging grave offenses. Among the accusations, disregard of official duty, misapplication of public resources, and obstruction of justice. The Texas House must vote on each article. A majority vote will impeach somebody. Then it becomes the purview of the state Senate. If the House votes to impeach, I would take the odds to Vegas all day. It's happening. Paxton would be suspended from office. Think of it this way. Impeachment is an, a political indictment. Simply put, we are accusing you of this. It's now up to the state Senate to convict you of what we've accused you of. But the legislative session ends May 29th, and lawmakers still have other big issues to decide on in just a few days. Budget to property taxes to DEI to tenure to school finance. If, there, if a special session would be called to serve as a trial, essentially, for Penn Paxton, could that 
coincide with a special session to deal with legislative issues? I mean, basically, could they do two birds, one stone? People are trying to figure out exactly, can they do that? Paxton's time in office has been plagued with accusations, including an indictment on state securities fraud charges. Then came a whistleblower lawsuit against him. Now the AG needs the legislature to approve using state funds to pay a $3.3 million settlement. The thought is, is that they move so quickly to impeach because essentially had Texas uh, legislature actually gone, awa- gone along with this, they essentially would be culpable or at least a, a part of essentially what might be a criminal conspiracy in terms of paying off the whistleblowers. Now, there was another element here that could complicate things. State Senator Angela Paxton, that's Ken Paxton's wife. She has a vote in the Senate. We'll keep you updated on what happens. Do you have a flight to catch? Well, you're in good company because almost 187,000 people are expected to fly out of San Antonio International Airport for the holiday weekend. That's a record number. Our Jesse Degollado has more. The crowds come and go. Not bad considering they're predicting a record number of travelers over the long Memorial Day weekend. Still, I asked some of them what are their secrets of having a good flight regardless of how crowded the flight might be. Probably patience. Uh, I'm sure, you know, there'll be a little bit of bumps in the road there trying to get from here to there and allowing yourself sufficient time. I think that's paramount. You know, uh, we've got here over two hours early. It is that that military in us. If you're on time, you're late. If nothing else, some say that they try to keep in mind why it is they're traveling and, of course, the destination that awaits them. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. From the skies to the roads, let's take a look out there right now. I-10 and medical, you can see a slowdown here. There is that lane blocked off where it looks like a part of the highway at I-10 here really merging together. And it appears there's two white vehicles there near the center median. We don't know exactly if they were involved in a wreck, potentially a stalled vehicle, um, but it looks like there's definitely a slowdown because of that. Of course, Friday at six o'clock ahead of a holiday weekend. Look outside with live cam. A lot of people making plans for this long weekend and wondering how the weather will affect things, Adam. Well, it's not going to be as hot as it can be this time of year. You know, quite often Memorial Day, we get up into the 90s. You feel that really thick humidity. We're going to be running a little below average. Now, it looks like it could rain out there at any moment, but we're not going to have any showers. You look at the visible satellite imagery and those clouds thickened up briefly overhead. Maybe second guessing what's going on out there. It's fine. You're in the clear this evening. You're in the clear tonight as well. These clouds are clearing on out. As we progress into the weekend, we will see some more showers and thunderstorm chances emerge back into the picture. 85 right now. Dew point is 64. Not overly humid, but a bit muggy. Port SA 83, 82 Bernie Stage, Gonzalez at 87 and Bandera right now at 83 degrees. Through the evening, temperatures just gradually falling. Clear sky, calm wind, 77 at 10 o'clock, midnight at 73. I'll be back in a bit to time out some thunderstorm chances for the weekend and Memorial Day in just a bit. Adam, thank you. The murder retrial of a man accused of killing his girlfriend is now focusing on text messages. Mark Howerton is charged with Kaylee Mandati's murder. She was a student at Trinity University when she was killed back in October of 2017. Text messages from both of their phones show that Mandati was trying to get out of the relationship and asking for space. And Howerton texted back that he would kill himself if she left him. In another exchange between Mandati and Howerton, she told him that she was scared of him and would probably be killed. The majority of today's testimony focused on those text conversations. By the way, the trial continues next Tuesday. A 2020 deadly drunk driving case is close to coming to an end as the woman accused in that case agreed to a plea deal today. The family of the victim hoping that justice will be served. Erica Hernandez has more on the range of punishment the defendant is possibly facing. This was the scene on May 23rd, 2020. A wrong way driver crashing head on to an SUV 44 year old Gabriel Gallegos was driving. Gallegos died at the scene. The alleged drunk driver in the vehicle, then 20 year old Mariana Campos Jimenez. Three years later, in without Gabriel. How do you feel the gap of a lost loved one? You can't. The family has been closely following the case. 
In court Friday, as Campos Jimenez accepted a plea deal on the charge of intoxication manslaughter and pled no contest. This is an open plea agreement, which means the judge can decide anywhere from two to 20 years, but the defense is requesting deferred adjudication, which is a special kind of probation that would give Campos Jimenez the opportunity to keep the conviction off her record. It's been a long time and, uh, you know, there's no closure. Um, and, you know, I think our family is looking for closure. And that closure will come soon as the Gallegos family will be back in court later this summer. That's what we've been fighting for, um, is to have justice for my brother. Mariana Campos Jimenez will be back in the 437th courtroom on July 13th, and it will be determined then what her sentence will be. At the Kedena Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. We want you to stick around still on the news at six before you head out to the lakes this weekend. Local leaders want you to know something about water safety. That's coming up after the break. So now let's take a sneak peek at what we're working on for the night beat. Gratitude for our veterans. It's what's inspiring one local middle school student tonight. The message behind his pin design that's earned him national recognition. Yeah, pretty cool. That story and more tonight on the night beat. A lot of people spend Memorial Day weekend out on the water. It's, of course, a big boating weekend. Yep. And first responders want to make sure that everyone who shoves away from the dock returns safely. And that's very important for the county and state. Ursula Perry with how boaters have a chance to keep the safety street going. It's days like these that boaters and fishermen like TJ look for every day. Oh, it was amazing. Uh, Got a limited redfish very quick, and then we went put a whole bunch of blue catfish. Very, very good day. And best of all, everyone came back to land safely. For all of the first responders of Bear County, that is mission accomplished. Last year, they were happily surprised Memorial Day weekend by the low number of water accidents locally. I like to think that it's because between the three, our, our us three partner agencies, we maintained a presence out here as we will this next weekend, uh, and and hopefully we deter a lot of the things. Those three agencies: Texas Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, Bear County Sheriff's Office, and Bear County Fire. All three standing together with one message: Make sure that if you're going to be out there on the water that if you have medications, take that medication out with you. We've had instances where a boat uh, lost their engine and they left their medication back in their vehicle. So take the appropriate stuff, make sure you stay hydrated. There are three things you can do that will help you survive a boating accident. One of them is simple, wear a life jacket. You wouldn't believe it, but 75 to 85% of people who die in boating accidents weren't wearing one. Also use the ignition safety switch on the motor on your boat, very important. And it may seem obvious, but if you're going to be in a boat, chances are you should know how to swim safely. For those who make their living on the water, often they see one common denominator in water accidents. A lot of it's probably alcohol involved. Can't get a BUI out here. Um, they will arrest you and take you in for a DUI. So whoever's operating the boat needs to be sober. Good advice this weekend and every day too. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. All right, back here closer to us, we want to take, yeah, Sky 12 here. Uh, I believe that's over the downtown area. Yes, over yeah. the downtown area. We got the Tower of the Americas, the Alamo Dome. I bet some people might be headed downtown this weekend for the long holiday weekend. And Adam, you mentioned those clouds earlier that it looked like rain, but not happening. Not happening, not yet at least. Looks like it could rain. It was looking a little ominous, but not the kind of uh, situation that we have that'll give us those pop up afternoon showers and storms, at least not yet. But we will be dodging a few weekend showers and probably non severe storms. Severe storms look unlikely this upcoming holiday weekend and temperatures running below average by Sunday. Our average high is 90 degrees and we're gonna be below that. Take a look at our trend, 87 tomorrow, 86 Sunday, and on Monday, Memorial Day, down to 83 degrees for the high temperature, mainly, in, mainly due to increased cloud cover. But notice those storm chances straddling the days there. We're in that pattern again where we could get some of those late night and very early morning leftover showers and storms from West Texas starting tomorrow night and then again Sunday night, but Memorial Day 40%. That's our peak because we'll have an upper disturbance moving overhead. So let's talk about our overall pattern here. 
Still quiet across San Antonio and a good portion of Texas, except for West Texas. That's where we have showers and thunderstorms and even into New Mexico. Now, remember just a few days ago, the remnants of a thunderstorm complex in New Mexico gave us some morning showers and storms. Nothing severe, just a good soaking. We could see that again starting tomorrow night and then again uh, Sunday night into early Monday morning. This is the pattern though. The storms develop in West Texas and New Mexico and even up in the Panhandle and then the steering flow aloft pushes them our way. Now, typically they dissipate and fall apart like what we saw earlier today here near Wichita Falls. We petered out before it made it to Dallas, but sometimes these actually stay just enough intact to give us some of their leftovers like we saw a few times earlier this week. And this is because of the upper level high, the big blue H over Mexico, counterclockwise circulation around it. So that sets us up in that northwesterly flow aloft. And you can never trust the northwesterly flow aloft around here. Even though the models will say, no, 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 it's all going to weaken and we know better that sometimes they can actually make it. That's why we have those chances in there, but it comes down to a wait and see situation. So we'll keep you updated. As for Monday, this is why we're expecting more numerous showers and storms because of this weak disturbance that's going to slide overhead. The upper level high breaks down, weak upper level low, a little swirl aloft should help stir things up enough to get a few showers and storms going. Not everywhere, and it's not going to be a washout. Just plan for maybe dodging a few of those showers periodically throughout the day on Memorial Day. So if you have that backyard barbecue, you may have to just move it inside for a little bit. Here's another way to look at these rain and storm chances tomorrow night. 30% Sunday, 20% Sunday night, 30% Monday. We're up to 40%. Now here's a look at our rainfall so far at the airport. 3.62 inches since May 1st. That's just a little below average eight hundredths of an inch since January 1st. So year to date 11.54. That's about six tenths of an inch below average, but already this year it's toward the end of May and we've had more rain than all of 2022. That's amazing. 86 are high today. The average being 89. And as I said before, we're going to be below average for afternoon highs this weekend up to 92 in Laredo and Catula, 88 Kennedy and Pleasanton, Kerrville, 82 degrees. Just a pleasant Friday evening as we head into the holiday weekend. And we'll start today tomorrow at 68. Saturday morning, a mixture of sun and clouds, kind of like today. At times it'll look a little gray, but we're not expecting anything to pop up during the daylight hours. 87 the high temperature, then tomorrow night we could get into a few showers and storms, just isolated in nature. Canyon Lake tomorrow, 86, Timberwood Park, 85, Elmendorf, 87, Von Army, 87, and Lake Hills, Myco area, 86. Notice we dropped down to 83 by Memorial Day, and we stay there into Tuesday of next week. And there's a potential if the clouds get thicker than expected, we could have high temperatures even cooler than the low 80s for Monday and Tuesday. Something to watch. Yeah, but as far as this weekend, not a washout. We've been no. there so many Memorial yes, Day we weekends. Have. So that is a good thing. And non-severe storms. Perfect. Lots of people are going to be out barbecuing this weekend, so that'll be good. Okay, you know what goes well with barbecue? Baseball. <laughs> uh, and we know that two teams are facing elimination. That's right. Bernie Champion and Johnson both dropped their game ones yesterday. Today, Bernie Champion took the diamond at NAISD Sports Park with a chance to keep their season alive, and they managed to pull through. When we come back, we've got highlights from a great back and forth battle. Plus, San Antonio FC gets another tough test this week against New Mexico United. We'll preview that matchup next. It is a pivotal day in the high school baseball regional semifinals, especially in Class 5A, where Bernie Champion looks to keep their season alive in Game 2 against Corpus Christi Ray at NAISD Sports Park. And the Chargers are in trouble in the top of the first. Two on here, Jordan Garza chops one left side. Nice grab by the shortstop, but the throw is high and just out of the first baseman's reach. Jack Bell comes in to score. Jack Spence is right behind him, and he slides into home plate under the tag. So two runs score on the error as Ray takes a 2-0 lead. Bottom half of the first, Chargers have a great chance to answer. Base is loaded with only one out. Jared Wingo slices one to right center. Catch is made out there, but Evan Cool tags and scores on the sack fly. That makes it a 2-1 game. Fast forward now to the bottom of the fifth. Game tied at two with the go-ahead run on third. Cam Logan smokes one down the third baseline. That is a fair ball. Jordan Ballin comes home to put the Chargers on top three to two. Sophomore pitcher Aiden Smith goes the distance on the mound with 88 pitches and champion stays alive with a 3-2 victory. They're attacking me a lot with some off-speed. 
Uh, I was I was down two strikes a lot this game. Uh, I trust myself in the box. I'm a competitor. I knew that fastball was coming in. They haven't thrown it all game. I knew it was going to happen. I cast it, casted the barrel out, caught it out front, and what happened happened. We kind of had to be more business-like than we were yesterday, but me personally, I mean, I've been thrown into this situation all year being the closer, so, I mean, it's nothing new to me. Just same mindset, business-like, got to get it done. Game three is tomorrow afternoon in Jordanton. First pitch is scheduled for 1.30 p.m. and the winner goes to the regional final. In Class 6A, Johnson looking even their regional semifinal series against Far San Juan Alamo in game two as seen on the BGC app. Jaguars strike first in the bottom of the first. Barrett Johnson drives one deep to right field. That's going to drop in and hit off the wall. Cason Cunningham scores the opening run, part of a two-run inning, and the Jags lead 2-0. Then top three, Barrett strikes again with a towering shot to left. Goodbye baseball. Solo shot highlights another two-run frame. And the Jaguars stave off elimination with a 4-2 win. So there is a game three and is currently underway in Laredo. We'll have highlights from this one tonight on the night beat. In high school softball, New Braunfels Canyon will continue their playoff run against their district rival Smithson Valley in the Class 5A regional final. Canyon took both regular season games against the Rangers this season by final scores of 7-0 and 2-1. Now they're prepared for game one of their best of three series tonight. We faced them a couple times, but I just think we need to go into this game thinking it's a new game, new team, and we just need to play our game, and I think we'll be fine. Meanwhile, East Central is looking to keep their season alive in Game 2 of their Class 6A Regional Final Series tonight against San Benito. You can watch it live right now on the BGC app. We'll have those highlights tonight on the Night Beat as well. This time last week, San Antonio FC felt like they had righted the ship. Then came a stunning 1-0 loss to Detroit, the worst team by record in the Eastern Conference. Now, as they return home for a three-game homestand, the Alamo City Club is once again looking for answers, this time against the New Mexico United team that has won two straight games. You know, they're one of those teams, it's, it's never easy playing against them. they got talent as well. They, they work hard. Um, credit to them. They're always one of those teams that uh, can get a result at any moment. So for us, it's not taking it lightly and really knowing that we're going to have to be at the, our A game if we're going to walk away with three points. Kickoff against New Mexico United is scheduled for 7.30 p.m. at Toyota Field. They have three straight home games. So this is a great opportunity to reestablish themselves at the top of the Western Conference. All right, thank you. You got it. We'll be right back. Will you be staying in town this weekend? Well, good. There was plenty of stuff for you to get out and do, so much that we invited our friend back. That's right. Local influencer Stephanie Guerra is here with an itinerary of all the good stuff happening around San Antonio. All right. So let's start with tonight, the 8th annual Memorial Day Metal Fest. We know that veterans can get in for free, and it goes through Sunday. So if you don't go today... Yes, yeah, so we know that San Antonio loves metal, yeah. rock yes. music, right? We used to be known as like Metal City USA. Um, so there is a great Memorial Day Metal Fest this weekend at the Deco Ballroom in one of our favorite parts of town. Um, and it is free for veterans. They have three days full of hundreds of bands, live music, performers with everything going on. Um, and then veter sorry. I don't know exactly what the discounts are for children, but I know there's one also, so it's family friendly. Okay. But it's going to be a really fun weekend of music. Family friendly, wallet friendly, it sounds like <laughs> as well. Also, an Asian festival happening here in town. Yeah, so this is one of my favorite events in San Antonio all year long. It's actually moved to UTSA's downtown campus this year. Um, we all know there's a lot of construction going on in Hemisphere and yes. around the Institute of Texan and Cultures. So it is moved to UTSA's downtown campus, which I think will be a great change of scenery um, to the west side of downtown and we're still so, still celebrating AAPI Heritage Month so it's a great place to get all the food the music the performances I love the dances it's very very brutal very authentic <laughs> it's a great place to celebrate Asian culture in San Antonio in this event tomorrow and tickets are $15 for that yes all right now we know that uh, Vista Brewing is also holding its two-year anniversary yes yeah, so we're talking about beer where are my buddies they're not here today <laughs> um, but we do have a great San Antonio Vista Brewing um, 
the brewery, sorry, they're uh, actually located a little farther north of us, mm -hmm. um, closer to Driftwood. That's where they're originally from. And they have a San Antonio location. They're celebrating two years here now. They're over on the west side on Buena Vista Street. They're going to have a great day full of live music, food, and of course, their special beers. And I heard they have a special toast and announcement yeah, at 3 yeah. p.m. So I'm really curious to see what that is because I heard it might be big news. Um, but it's free to get in and go. And you can also take the family to that if you'd like. It's a beautiful warehouse called um, Warehouse 5. All kinds of vendors in there, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And your beer buddies, Larry Ramirez, who's <laughs> not here today. we got a beer guy in the Weather Center, though. But, you know, he brews his own and all. Shout out yeah. to Adam. <laughs> Adam is a man of many talents. All right, so we also have the SATX Vintage Crawl. What's that about? Yeah, so this is actually the first event that they have ever done collectively. Um, so SATX Vintage Crawl has put together um, a lot of vintage vendors that are already established that either have pop-ups or they have their own storefronts and you're going to be able to crawl different parts of town so mm -hmm. south town deco district downtown um, they put together a map and a list of all the companies for you but they're also having a huge pop-up market at brick at blue star for the other vendors and then they're ending it with a big vintage ball at the end of the night at brick as well so if you love vintage which i know Everybody does. Very popular right now. Um, tomorrow is the day to check it out, and you can find all kinds of new things from home decor, clothes, accessories. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's oh, cool. shopping day. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, we also know that uh, San An soccer, San Antonio FC, is going up against New Mexico United, and it's going to be military appreciation. Yeah, so I love our FC. Like, I think they are one of the best in the country, just saying. Um, and I love how involved they are in the community, right? Mm -hmm. So we are military city. USA Memorial Day is Monday. It's a long weekend. It's a time to honor and celebrate our the, our loved ones that we've lost. And I think San Antonio FC does a great job. Um, so there are discounts and free tickets also for military and veterans. Um, and I'm sure they're going to end the night in a spectacular way. I don't want to say that they have fireworks or anything, but I know there's always something fun. And they also have limited edition jerseys and merchandise for tomorrow. Oh, okay. um, so I think San Antonio FC kills it. Like we're going to have a great season. You know, they're always doing great. And I love that they love to be involved in San Antonio. So a couple of different ways to shop this weekend. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If you're looking for some swag. Let's go shopping. Yeah, right? Okay. So uh, if you're missing Fiesta, surprise, it's not over yet. We have a rescheduled Fiesta event that's happening. I yeah. think San Antonio is where the fiesta never ends quite literally <laughs> um, so unfortunately we had crazy weather in april during fiesta mm -hmm. deco fiesta we're just all deco district today i think um, had to reschedule their big event that supports Network for Young Artists. So Network for Young Artists actually grows a lot of young musicians. So they have classes, they have performances, they actually help them become rising stars in the community. So a lot of people have gone through their program and gone on to be on American Idol, The Voice, they've performed wow. at theaters. It's a really great program that we have here in San Antonio. And so they celebrate that with a day full of performances from the young artists that are in their organization. Um, also have a market curated by SA Local Market, so you'll do more shopping on Sunday. <laughs> um, and then um, any proceeds from the event um, go back into network, network for Young Artists, so you get to support our budding musicians. And then people who are already performing around town, they actually have some extra events and surprises there. And the headliner is Chris Bettis, mm -hmm. Selena's oh, yeah. husband. Yes. So that's going to be a really, really big end of the night. but. Definitely go early so you can support all of the local emerging acts and then stick around for Chris Bettis also. What's so. your favorite event going on? Oh my gosh, favorite this weekend? Yes. <laughs> um, you know what? Um, I am. I love the Asian Festival, hoping to make it out there. I'm interested to see the vintage crawl. So, okay. uh, you know, I love, if I can shop secondhand, upcycled, anything yeah, like course. that. Like I am all about doing that. So we have a lot of vintage furniture in our house and things and uh, artwork, you know, all of that stuff. So I'm excited for both of those events tomorrow. As she points to her husband. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, like yeah, yeah, furniture. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Stephanie Guetta, always great to have you here. Thanks so much. So great to be on with y'all and I hope everybody has a great weekend. And Thank you. it's been a rough week. So I really appreciate that you all are always helping our community and keep on feeling good about things that are going on in San Antonio. Yeah, to spread some smiles. Yes. There is so much good going on, especially this weekend. Thank Thanks, you. Stephanie. Thank you. We'll Thank be right you. back.